Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 71 and today we have the big Champions League quarterfinal second leg against Marseille and also a game against Fulham in the Premier League which could see us be crowned champions come the end of 90 minutes. Before we play those games though, I'm going to show you how Swansea have been getting on off camera. Not much to report since the last episode, obviously just a one game played. Uh, we beat Leicester by four goals to one. I played this game like half an hour ago. Rested an awful lot of the side. Only Esposito and Leno started for my usual first 11. We won the game by four goals to one. Fell behind early, but rallied back. Esposito a brace, Tran scored as well, as did Sisto, as we got the win by four goals to one. Peter Jones as well played centre back. 18 years old now, already one cap for Wales. Um, the future is just so bright here at Swansea, man. I've got so many awesome young players here and uh, it was good to see him make his first league start for us and he played all right in that win so just the one game of camera and that means the Premier League uh, currently looks like this as you can see there are just five games to go for us and four for United and City and that is why if we win our game in hand uh, against uh, Fulham which you'll see today we will be crowned champions so today we could have a double celebration into the Champions League semi-finals and also back to back to back winners of the Premier League. Premier League, three successive titles, that would be absolutely awesome and a clear sign of our dominance as the best side in the English football pyramid. So, first game of yesterday, let's get straight to it. Take on Marseille here in the Champions League quarterfinal second leg. We are at home. Uh, to refresh your memory, we uh, we drew the first leg 3-3 in that crazy, crazy game where we took the lead on three separate occasions but failed to hang on to any of those advantages. And that's why coming to the second leg, I still think we are the favourites due to those away goals. You guys know I love those away goals in Europe, but I feel as though not finishing off Marseille could be our downfall and I think if they nick an early away goal I think we might struggle and, uh, and end up uh, losing this tie but hopefully Touchwood will be okay fingers crossed stay positive stay optimistic we'll be into the Champions League semi-finals for the first ever time and then it will start to get real you know like I'm downplaying it right now I'm downplaying our chances in Europe but getting into the semi-finals if we can do that then it will start to get real there's a possibility that in our final season we could possibly go all the way really really trying to downplay that but you never know right but uh, still this is the team for the game. Uh, it's a 4-4-2. Uh, stepped with a 4-4-2 for a long, long, long time. Now, I went back to it after the 4-2-3-1. The 4-4-2 is the old faithful. It works. And this is the team for the game. Leno's in goal. Back for a George, Fabiano, Marlon and Caraman. In midfield, Brandt on the left. Benzker on the right. And in the middle, Sam Redman and Pep. Up top together are Jean, Luca Esposito and Chewy due to trans ineligibility. And on the bench... Wow, I said that word really, really clearly despite these syllables and uh, me struggling to pronounce words sometimes. On the bench, Pickford, Rakik, Chambers, Sigurdsson, Sisto, Mares and Javier Hernandez as well. So first game yesterday, then we take on Marseille. I'm trying to act really calm and casual, but in the inside, I'm really, really nervous indeed. But come on, Swansea, let's get the win. Let's get through to the Champions League semi-finals. So first highlight of the game, then it comes seven minutes in with George winning the ball back. He finds Brandt, and if we can get an early goal, I'll be feeling very confident indeed because Marseille will need to score a double. Brandt finds Pep here just outside the area. Does he want to lever it? Yes, he does, but Kepa, who was very disappointing in the first leg, makes a very good save, and Marseille get the ball clear. So still nil-nil, but that's what I'm looking for in this game. Get an early goal, settle some nerves, and really put the pressure on Marseille. And a highlight for us here a couple minutes later is George finds Benzke inside the area. He crosses. It's headed away by Arias, who had a storming first leg, but only as far as Redmond. Pep plays it through towards Caraman. He scored in the first leg. Oh, he's hit a post. Caraman was in there for his second goal in two European games. He hadn't scored for us ever before. And he must love playing against Marseille. He was in, but the Dutch right back strikes the woodwork. And it's still nil-nil. That would have been a massive goal for us. And another highlight for us here, 18 minutes in with Benzka winning the ball back. This has been a very encouraging start. Let's keep this up as the Uruguayan finds Chewy on the ball. The German striker plays it back towards Caraman. Now Pep inside, back out wide towards Benzka. Can we create a chance? Sammy Boy on the ball, back out wide towards Benzka. Inside the area, takes it round one and finds Chewy. Gets in. There is the first goal of the game. It's been coming. And 19 minutes in, we take the early lead and a big, big advantage in the second leg. Redmond played a fantastic ball towards Benzke, who got inside the fullback here, took it inside, gave it towards Chewy, and the German striker fires the ball into the back of the net. He's been in good form of late, and it is 1-0 to the Swans, and the significance of that goal, to add to our three away goals, means that Marseille now must score twice. They're more than capable of doing that, we saw that in the first leg, and of course they're more than capable of coming from behind, we also saw that in the first leg, but big, big advantage for us there, and a fantastic start. Now let's get a second goal. So first highlight 
by over the second half as Benzka swings in a corner. It would drop towards Marlon, and if it wasn't for a fantastic save by the goalkeeper Kepa, we would have taken a two-goal lead. We keep the pressure on Marseille, though, as this attack continues. Redmer receives the ball from Caraman. He finds Pep here through towards Benzica. Benzica finds Chewy, and oh my word, it's the same sort of goal we scored in the first half. Benzica receives the ball inside of the left-back, Alex Tellez, gives it to Chewy, rolls it off to him, and we get ourselves a second goal. Pep finds the Uruguayan through towards Chewy. There's the second goal, and that should do it now. I really do feel that. I know we've got just over half an hour to play, but Marseille now need to score three. Of course, they're more than capable of doing that. We know that, and coming from behind, but I think that will do it now. We should be into the Champions League semi-finals. It's getting real. I can't believe it. We're going to the semis. Well done, boys. And a chance late on for us. Here's our third goal. George on the ball. Takes it around his man and crosses. And Chewy could have been in for the hat-trick there. But instead it falls to Caraman. Muharim Caraman. Who scores his second goal for the club. And both of which have come against Marseille. This boy will tear it up in League 1. Absolutely fantastic. Or League 1, I should say. 3-0 to Swansea. And what a fantastic performance in the second leg. Do you know, going forward in the first leg, we were phenomenal. Scored three goals. And if we could actually defend, we would have seen out, seen out this tie and uh, and had it sewn up in the first leg. But instead, we, we made it nervous for us going into the second. But in this second leg, defensively, far better. And going forward, just as good. So 3-0 the final score. Well, it should be. And that will do it then. We are in to the Champions League semi-finals. Caraman score. I find that so funny. I, I, I find that so funny. I don't know why. I just think that the guy's never scored before. And then both of his goals come within seven days. And they both come against the same side, Marseille. But anyway, 3-0 the final score. Passionately going to tell the lads a very nice victory. Well done. Everyone's delighted, really. And let's really lay on the praise for the boys because they definitely deserve it too. So 3-0 the final score and we are in to the semi-finals. You'll see the draw in just a moment's time and find out who we'll be facing. Let's have a double celebration today and then also wrap up the Premier League title later as well. Right then, so here we go. It's time for the draw for the semi-finals in the Champions League. Of course, never reached this stage before and the three teams we could face are Atletico Madrid, Barcelona or last season's winners Paris Saint-Germain. So going to be tough whoever we face but uh, I think I probably would prefer Atletico Madrid out of all of these um, as I don't, I don't know why but I just imagine it oh okay well maybe maybe not they're, they're top of La Liga and uh, maybe I prefer Barcelona then who for some reason seems to be struggling at the moment but uh, I, I guess I guess we'll have to wait and see but anyway here we go then it's the semi-final draw and, uh, and let's see who we get so the first team drawn out is us we'll have a home tie in the first leg and it's going to be against either one of the Spanish sides or the French team it's going to be oh it's the team I didn't want at all Paris Saint-Germain last season's winners and of course the final is going to be hosted in France as well um, I don't know why that's significant I don't know why I pointed that out I just did but anyway we've got Paris Saint-Germain and that is the one team I did not want they won the um, the, the Champions League last year and I'm a little bit worried having to face them as well because they've got such an awesome side in the game and they could be a really really tough team to overcome I think we can I think we can, but they've got some absolutely awesome players, and um, yeah, there's 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 a bit of fear now uh, going into the semi-finals. There would have been fear whoever we faced, to be fair, though, let's be honest, but uh, it's PSG in the semis, and uh, you will see both of those ties. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess you'll probably see, and see both of those ties in the next episode, because, you know, by then we probably, I mean, touch wood, hopefully, fingers crossed, don't really need to do that, because I think we probably will do it, but we should have wrapped up the Premier League by then. But anyway, uh, let's go then. Second game of the episode, we know who we're facing the, uh, the Champions League Finals. We now have a chance of reaching, uh, I should say, winning uh, the Premier League title for the third successive year. We take on a relegation threatened side in Fulham at home, and I do believe we should get the three points, which again, oh no, it won't. No, my maths is terrible. Oh my god, my maths is horrible. My maths is horrible because even if we win, we'll go 10 points clear. United and City can still catch up. It's unlikely, but oh, my maths is horrible. Wait, unless. Unless, unless United uh, lose, well, it, it can't be done in 90 minutes anyway because United don't play at the same time as us. Oh, oh, I mean, you know, suspense. It's it's just been thrown out the window. I've messed up completely, haven't I? We can't win the Premier League title at the end of 90 minutes. Sorry, everyone. Um, yes, I've completely ruined that. Wow, I can't believe it. Research, that's exactly what I do all the time. I'm I'm professional. I can't believe it. I've completely messed it up. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's an important game. It's an important game. It puts us, you know, one step closer. But anyway, this is the team for the game. I can't believe it. This is the team for the game. We're going to stick with the same 4-4-2 and the same team that, uh, that beat Marseille so convincingly because even though we can't wrap up the title come the end of 90 minutes, it will still be a big, big win for us. So this is the team for the game then. Uh, Leno in goal, back for George, Fabiano, Marlon, Caraman, midfield. 
midfield is Brandt, Roman and Pep and Benzica uh, up top together as Posito. No, actually I will put uh, Gerard Tran back in the team because uh, he's, he's been banging him in the league and sure he's been doing it in Europe. So uh, yeah, why not? Uh, up top will be Tran and Esposito actually, as opposed to what I was going to say, which is Esposito and Chewy. On the bench, Pickford, Rakeet, Chambers, Six, and Sisto, Morris, and Chewy. And here we go then. Second game, so we take on Fulham. Unfortunately, we can't win the Premier League come the end 90 minutes, but it'll still be a big, big win for us, and we'll be on the brink. So come on, Swansea, let's get the win anyway. And if nothing else, this shows you exactly why maths is such an important subject in school. And I got an E grade in GCSE, so I guess this was probably on the cards. So I was going to mess up completely, but still. First highlight of the game comes to us as Tran finds Esposito. This duo has been fantastic of late as Benzka is sent down the right hand side. He crosses, and Esposito should have made it 1 0, and actually does. Woodman, poor old Woodman, is that Freddie Woodman, I think it is, uh, made a really good save there to deny Esposito to begin with, but the ball rebounded straight to the Italian stallion, who had a, a really simple finish. All of our strikers of late have been in absolutely fantastic form, and that is so good to see, um, because of course we did have a bit of a striker crisis early on in the season, now we're reaping the rewards. Anyway, Esposito gets two bites of the cherry, the second attempt does score, and it is 1-0 to the Swans, perfect start. And a highlight pretty much directly after us as well is Sammy Boy finding Pep. Pep finds Gerard Tran inside the area. Skips around Phil Jones and hits the undecided crossbar. And Fulham will get the ball away. How I knew it was the undecided crossbar in a 2D angle, I can't tell you. But it's still 1-0 to Swansea. And that could have been 2. But a free kick here for Fulham. And a chance to get back on level terms. And they have as well. Wow. Rules has pulled one out of the chop, uh, chop drawer. He's pulled out of the chop drawer, has he? Well, he's pulled out of the top drawer with an absolutely fantastic strike from the free kick I must say it was a five man wall none of them jumped he'll turn their back and Leno I mean it wasn't right in the corner I felt possibly could have got to that one poor footwork not entirely sure maybe he saw it late it was a good free kick regardless and Fulham uh, much to my surprise have pegged us back almost instantly and it is 1-1 and as the highlight continues here there could be a chance for Fulham to take a shock lead Sanabria is on the ball and goes for goal and fires it just wide the post or just over the bar I should say it's still 1-1 but uh, Fulham the minnows showing that they are no pushovers and another free kick here for Fulham as they continue just put the pressure on here. Fabiana gets it away though, and now a possible chance on the break and a chance for the anti jinx to be in full effect. Brandt finds Gerald Tran. Look at the space out wide. He's tried to go to the left, and in the end he does and finds Esbozito. And there is Jean Luca Esbozito for a second goal of the game. These these two have been fantastic of late, and that is really good to see. Tran get the assist and Esbozito get the finish. I wanted him to go out wide to the right hand side, but instead it shows why I was never a striker as a junior football player because I would have made terrible decisions. It's a good pass by trying to do his Bozito at the second attempt. It's 2-1 Swansea, and the Italian stallion has his second, and there's another highlight directly afterwards. The sound of on the ball, and Sam Redman brings him down from behind, and we've conceded a penalty directly after scoring. Wow, this is reminding me of the Marseille game. Take the lead, give it away. Take the lead, give it away. Joel Campbell will surely make it 1-1, a 2-2 shot, and he does. It is 2-2, and the Costa Rican puts Fulham back on double terms again. What's going on? And here is a highlight for us here. 31 minutes in a chance for us to take the lead for the third time in the game. Brandt finds Benzka. Good switch to the play there as the Uruguayan sprints down the right-hand side. Cross it into the centre and Esbozito has got a first-half hat-trick and done it in 32 minutes. Chewy got a really quick hat-trick a couple episodes ago. It might be the last episode now. I can't remember. And uh, Esbozito has got a really quick hat-trick himself. 32 minutes in. I'm not sure which one was quicker, funny enough. I'll have to look it up. But the Italian stallion fires it in. Gets on the end of the South American cross and puts us in front again let's not throw away lead the leads for the third time in the game come on so first highlight of the second half and it does come to Fulham as well as Sanabria receives the pass here tries to get it inside to Joel Campbell and does back towards Sanabria goes for goal oh he hit the bar oh my word Leno almost caught out there by Sanabria as Fulham almost pegged us back for a third time in the game just like Marseille did uh, well, I think it was just over a week ago now in game, but it's still 3-2, thank God, but uh, Fulham not going anywhere it seems. And here is another highlight here just before the hour mark with Fulham trying to get themselves back in the game and instead Redmond wins the ball back, well done, and finds Esposito down this left hand side, he's got a hat trick and oh, he almost got an assist, Tran hitting the post, still 3-2, this has been such an open game though, end to end stuff, we still lead by just a 1. And there's another highlight here. There's been so many highlights in this game as Sanabria takes it round George here. Down his right side and crosses. And Campbell has made it 3-3. I don't believe it. We've done the same against Marseille in the quarterfinal of the Champions League first leg. I can't believe it. George got skinned in that game as well a few times. It seems like teams know now George is a bit of a defensive liability at left back. Sanabria crosses. Campbell peels off his mount at the far post. That's a free header. Leno's not going to stop that one. It's 3-3. I don't believe this. And there is the final score then in a bizarre game to end today's episode. We draw with Fulham by three goals to three. 
And going forward, we are fantastic. Defensively, we are awful. I feel like I've said that before recently. 3-3 um, three, three to final score, and I'm assertively going to tell the team I'm disappointed. Uh, no, nah, I'm not going to say. I'm going to say simply put, wasn't good enough. Just, just say simply put, wasn't good enough. And assertively, I'm going to lay into my defenders as well for conceding three goals against a relegation threat inside. Absolutely awful. And again, just like the Marseille game very, very recently indeed. So I'm very disappointed about that. You know, I really, really am. We should have got the three points in that one. And I understand that it wouldn't have won us a title like I initially thought. But either way, that is a, that is a poor... Poor, poor, poor performance from us, defensively speaking, at least. But Esposito well, did get a hat That was good to see. He's been great since returning from injury. But it does mean that with four games to go, we still haven't wrapped up the title yet. As you can see, we can do it uh, in the next game, I do believe. Yes. Is my mask better this time, guys? Can we do it in the next game? I'm pretty sure we can. We can do it in the next game where we take on Everton in midweek. But that won't be the next game you'll see. Uh, I'll play that game off camera. Um, and I think... I mean, do I want to come back for the Southampton game? It seems like we're definitely going to win the title anyway. I don't know whether I can really be bothered to go ahead and um, and show you one of those games. I'm pretty sure we'll wrap it up in one of those games because we're so many points ahead now, despite that missed opportunity against Fulham. Um, I think what I'll do is, unless we... I'll tell you what I'll do. If we do it against Everton, uh, then obviously I'll miss the Southampton game out and just come back for the PSG game. Otherwise, what I might do in the next episode is if we still haven't won the title yet, I might do a triple header. Southampton, PSG, skip the West Brom game, and then PSG again. I, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Maybe a special episode for you, as that'll probably end up being the penultimate one of the series. So that went in today's episode episode in my Foot Manager series guys so a big 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 thank you for watching I really hope you have enjoyed it if you're enjoying today's episode then please do consider leaving a like likes your course much appreciated and they really help the channel grow as well much love to you all have a fantastic day obviously there is just so 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 few episodes left and I do want to say real briefly just before uh, we come towards the end of the series thank you for supporting the series it has been my longest Football Manager series ever um, ahead of my FM 14 series so a big big thank you for all supporting the series so far and as we come towards the conclusion again without your support it wasn't it wouldn't be possible so I want to say a big thank you for your support throughout all these episodes but thank you for watching this episode regardless hope you have enjoyed it if you haven't please leave a like much love to you all and I'll see you for the next episode in my football manager series very soon